Alright guys, due to popular demand, I have decided to make a golf it tutorial. Alright, so let's get started. First we should know is uh, basic movement. Just using WASD with control to go down and space to go up. Pretty basic stuff. Alright, next thing we know is spawning objects. So there are basically two types of objects in this game. Well, three, but I'll get to the third later. Decorations and obstacles, which are things like the environmental pieces, foliage, rocks, landscape, obstacles, uh, special effects, lights, etc. And lanes and goals. To spawn in any of the items, just press tab. Then scroll down through the list at which item you want. Let's start with the basic lane. Any lane or goal pieces have these little connector boxes. I like to call them snap boxes because they snap to the piece you're working with. Any lane piece has them. Lane pieces come in five varieties. Grassland, Winterland, Mines, Graveyard, and Pirate's Cove. In the menu they all look the same but on the ground they look like this. Alright, lanes and goals have the ability to also scale with whatever you connect them to. So I took this pre-scaled uh, piece I got and if you connect anything to it it'll also scale the item. For example, these creates these big turns. Or these big ramps. Or anything really. It also scales with the angle. Alright, the next thing I want to show you guys is how to manipulate the items. So let's spawn in a fresh item. Let's go with the simple lane wall. Okay, once you spawn in, just click it on the ground to place it. Then left click it to grab it. Then if you press Q, you'll turn on the location arrows. Use these to move the object on the ground when it's already placed. You can move them anywhere on the X, Y, Z axis. If you press E, you can change its rotation. Same thing as before, anywhere on the XYZ axis. And if you press R, spawn a new one, you can change its scale. You can go as big or small as you want. Also, if you hold Alt, then drag with the location, you can create copies. If you press the middle mouse button, you will spawn the last spawned object that you created, allowing you to rapidly create like long lines of uh, road if you want. You can also hold shift and click multiple roads to multi-select, allowing you to move and scale them all at the same time. You can also copy them all at the same time. And if you press G, you'll toggle the gameplay objects, allowing you to see what it looks like in-game. Alright, one more thing I forgot to show you guys. While placing down an item, if you press Q and E, you can rotate it. And if you hold Shift and use the mouse wheel, you can also change its size. Sorry about that. Alright guys, next up is the gameplay area. First we're going to start uh, making a hole. Once you guys create a basic hole, remember to use the goal lane at the very end. 
you're going to either press tab, go down to gameplay, and create a hole spawn. This is where the ball, ball spawns at. If you use uh, W and E, you can rotate the ball around, like usual. And once you set the ball, the arrow will point in the direction that it's going. This little arrow right here also shows you which direction you can aim. Then if you right click it, you can change the hole's properties. For example, setting this one on 2 par 2. Or a hole 1. So let's press play to see what happens. So if you notice, your ball will just keep continuously respawning. That's because it's not in a play area. To fix that, we do uh, spawning in a play area. First, let's move this up a bit so it's not in the way. Then press tab, go down to gameplay, click play area, and set it down. Then right click the play area, make sure it's set to the same hole as your hole spawn. Middle click, set it again, double check to see if it is. Then any other ones you add after that should be the same hole. So now, when you press play, your ball will no longer reset. If you if you place the play area underneath the or above the uh, hole spawn, you will be unable to click it. So you'd have to delete it, then replace it. There we go. Another thing that's pretty important to note is reset areas. Reset areas are basically zones that if your ball touches, they will instantly reset. So let's scale a reset area across this one to show you what happens. These are pretty useful if you want to make holes that you can't cheat on, like jumping over them into other goals, for example, like most YouTubers do, annoyingly enough. Or you can use them to make fire traps. Nope. Alright guys, the next thing I want to show you is the gameplay objects. These things are all sorts of fun, they're a bit more advanced, but we'll get through them. Alright, the first thing is the rotation object. Press tab, go to gameplay, and go to rotator. Then set that bad boy down. As you notice, it will start out as a basic plank. Just click the plank, move it around, see what you can do with it. As you can see, you can also change its uh, directions, just like any other object. You can even scale it, if you wish. If you right click it, it will open up a menu. This menu right here allows you to change the speed of its rotation along each axis, the X, Y, and Z. For us, we're going to set it to speed 100 on the Z rotation. And as you see, it'll start spinning like that. Then if you want, you click it, then rotate it 90 degrees. And there you go, you have a simple object getting in the way of your spawn. Or your goal, I mean. And if you really want, you can get crazy with it. Make it go all sorts of different directions. Alright, the next thing I wanted to show you with this is you can change its mesh. The mesh will basically change the object that it uses. Unfortunately, the only tile pieces available right now are the grassland. Hopefully in the future we will get the Pirate's Cove, the ghosts, or the graveyard, and all that. You know what I'm talking about. But we can use this to make a rotating lane. We can make it rotate really slow if you want. 
or we can use it to make the rotating bridge for no reason other than the fun. Or we can make it a knife. A very slow moving knife. All right, guys, the next thing we're going to work with is the timed rotation. Timed rotation is kind of like the rotator, but it's more of a back and forth type of thing instead of a full 360. To spawn these, press tab and go to timed rotation. Let's set one down and see what we can do with it. By default, it'll spawn as sort of this cleaver type thing. As before, you could change its mesh to anything you want. That's within the game. For us, I think we're going to make sort of a, I don't know, let's go with the moving table. Okay, as you see here, it's kind of acting weird. Let's change that. The forward speed and reverse speed basically change the speed at which it moves to each position. Uh, the way it works is it's basically going from a start rotation to an end rotation. So if you want to make the end rotation zero, which is basically its default state, and you could change its start rotation to something like 90, which flips it all the way over. Or you go 180 to make it flip all the way over. And I think 360 will make it change all the way over. Let me try that real quick. Oop, 200. Uh, that's a lot. Hmm. That did not work. Oh, okay, cool. Alright, so it appears that it will take the shortest route to the end rotation. So keep that in mind. You can also change its other rotations, like the x, uh, x axis, or the y axis, or the z axis at the same time. To create some crazy things. My recommendation is just to play with it and see what works. Alright, guys, the next part is the mass transformer. Uh, this thing's a bit more complicated. It's basically the big brother to the timed rotation. It can be used to move things back and forth. So let's uh, create a fresh spawn just to show you how it works. To make one, just press tab and go to mass transformer. And place one down. By default, it'll be the big red brick thingy, but like before, you could just change its brick or its mesh to anything you want. So let's move, let's make a minecart move. All right, so basically this is its default state. It should be zero, zero, zero. All right, then if we go to its end state, we can make it move along its x-axis. Let's go 500 to begin with. Maybe 500 is too much. Let's go 350. Basically, you'll move back and forth between those two points. If you go to the time, you can set the duration it takes to go between these points. The higher the number, the slower it uh, is. If you want to go really low, just go into like the decimals. You can even put a little bit of a pause on when it starts and stops, as well as make it active for specific holes. So let's give it a 3 second start and a 1 second stop. 
So it should wait there for three seconds, then come back, wait a second, then go back again. There's also several ease methods. You could go with step, which is basically instant. Uh, you go with the, all these different methods. I highly recommend checking them out yourself. This tutorial will take way too long if I go through them individually. And you can also use this to change its scale. Alright, why is that not working? And you can create uh, an object that shifts its size from place to place. Uh, do what you wish with it. It's actually quite useful. All right, let's delete that so it's not in the way for the next course. Alright guys, the next thing I want to show you is teleporters. Basically, teleporters are teleporters. Thing go in, thing come out. Thing go in, thing come out. To place one, just press tab, go to gameplay, click on teleporter, set that bad boy down, and when you right click it, it'll come up with this little menu. Uh, the teleporters that share the same ID are linked together. So for example, these ones should be 1. So if I go through this, it should take me through a random portal. However, if you don't want it random, you can go to the portal you want to designate as the exit and click that check mark. That will designate it as the primary exit allowing for you to basically go through that portal no matter what. So if you have like an entrance specific portal, you could just set all the other portals to primary exits. So they will always pop out the primary exits. It's really useful. Alright, the next thing we have is the boosters. Boosters are useful as they basically allow you to boost your ball. <laughs> as you can see, you can set it for way different uh, uh, power levels. To create a booster, just press tab again, go back down to gameplay, go to boost, and set it down. Then, like any other object, you can rotate them as well. And the boost power uh, is something you're going to have to play with. This one's set to 100, you can barely feel it. This one's set to 5,000, it launches you way across. And 1,000 seems to be the default. Alright, a thing of note that you should note about these is when you copy them with uh, alt clicking, the one that you copied will be the original. The, the real copy will actually be the one sitting on the ground and you have to take the real copy and reset its stats. It's a weird bug with this game, I don't know why it does it. It's just something you're gonna have to remember. Alright, the next thing I want to show you guys is cannons. Uh, cannons are very special. To spawn one in you have to go to tab, gameplay, then you have to scroll over to the themes and press Pirates Cove. Then it'll be this one right here. Cannons also have a power level. And the power level sh uh, basically allows you to shoot further. Cannons are really cool because when you go into a cannon, it gives you kind of like this uh, artillery view. Oop. 
And the thing of note, cannons are really buggy right now. Sometimes they will just not work. Use at your own risk. For example, this one decided not to work. Not sure why. But don't worry, I can fix this. We'll just spawn in a new one to show you how far they can actually go. And that's only set at a thousand. Another thing you should note that each of these uh, pieces are about a hundred in distance. If that gives you an idea how far you need to shoot. But yeah, sorry about the cannons. They're a little buggy right now. Hopefully the devs can fix that up a bit. All right, guys. The next thing I want to show you is blueprints. To make a blueprint, all you have to do is hold shift and multi-select some tiles, then press enter. Then name your blueprint to uh, something like anything you want, really. 4x4 four four circle thingy works. Then press create blueprint. Then to place a blueprint, you press tab, go down to blueprints. Then it should be in the list of things you've created. Then blueprints also have the snap tool if they contain a tile. The first thing you select, by the way, will be where it starts out. Then bam, you got it. All right, guys, the next thing I wanted to show you is text. Text is pretty cool. To create text, you basically press tab, go down to gameplay, click text. Then you set it on the ground. Then from here, you can mess with it. This is my text. Then you can change the color as well, make it any color you really want. Then to set it on things, uh, you just click it, increase its size, then you can rotate it as well like any other object, then you can move it back and forth, put it wherever you want, then there you go, you got some text. Alright guys, that's it for the tutorial. If there's anything I didn't go over that you think I should have, then feel free to let me know. Uh, feel free to like my channel, subscribe, leave comments, do whatever, and enjoy.